hospitality. We got in late last night. We came in from San Diego. San Diego. You're on, you're on the right coast. You're on the right coast. San Diego, California. And um, like I said, we put this together in the last couple weeks. And I brought uh, Jason Gethin out here with me. Give it up for Jason. See, I got to travel all first class and nice, and poor Jason had to sit in the back. <laughs> so I'm all rested, and he didn't sleep for uh, 24 hours it took us to get here, but it's worth it. We're super excited. Um, I really want to learn a lot about your culture. Uh, we're going on a wonderful eating trip tomorrow. We've, uh, we're going to go check out some markets, the seafood market, the farmer's market. So it's an honor for us to be here. We want to learn from you, and what an incredible country. What amazing hospitality. Everyone is so nice and so sweet. We watched one of the earlier master classes, and the questions, and everyone's so curious about the cuisine. It's very, very exciting to see. We walked around to all the booths earlier today. So many neat products, so many different things, and uh, GT Bank bringing everybody together and, and you know really trying to move the culinary world forward here in Nigeria is a lot of fun. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my history as a chef. Um, I, uh, I've been cooking my whole life. I've been cooking since I was about 10 years old. Um, I tried college, I tried to do some other things, I tried to be an actor for a while, I tried to go to, I tried to major in history and business, and my father one time, he came and watched me in a, a play, and he said, you're a horrible actor, <laughs> maybe we should look into something else. And he said, I noticed that all you do is throw parties, you cook food for your friends, and you make drinks, and you just have a good time. He said, maybe you should do that for a living. And I said, what is this job you speak of where all I do is laugh and entertain and eat and have fun with my friends. And he said, the restaurant industry. So I went to culinary school in, uh, in, in Oregon, um, the Le Cordon Bleu School up there, and I've been cooking ever since, and it's a, a gift that I fell in love with something that I love to do so much. Um, I got very lucky, kind of won the lottery. I was on Top Chef back in the day. I made it to the finals in Top Chef. Uh, and then I won the lottery again. I was on uh, NBC's The Taste with Anthony Bourdain, Nigella Lawson, some French guy named Ludo. Uh, Team Malarkey won, so I was very excited about that. Uh, my good friend Marcus Samuelson, who came out here last year, he was on the show after me, so I love Marcus. Um, and then everything just really took off. I opened my first restaurant seven years ago called Seersucker. I'm sure you're getting worried. You're going, is he going to be able to cook all his food and serve his food? You've uh, got no, 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 watch this. I'm fast. So I've done every competition on the Food Network. I've been chopped. I've been cutthroated. I'm on Guy's Grocery Games. I, I, I've won some and I've lost some, but there's one thing I am. It's really fast. So you're about to see me cook a lot of food really fast. So I opened up my first restaurant, Searsucker, that I owned seven years ago. Since then, I've opened 18 restaurants. <laughs> Woo! I closed three of them, <laughs> but 15 of them are still doing great. So I have Searsuckers in Las Vegas, San Diego, Austin, Texas. We have Herringbone, Waikiki, Las Vegas, LA, San Diego. We have, uh, we have Ivory on Sunset in Hollywood. We have Green Acre, Farmer and the Seahorse that Jason runs. Those are um, on these big pharmaceutical campuses. My new baby is Herb and Wood, H-E-R-B, Herb and Wood. So when you come visit me in San Diego, you know where to eat now, all right? So um, I'm gonna do three dishes from three different eras in my life, all right? We're gonna do, um, we're gonna do shrimp and grits from my seersucker brand, which is, we call New American Classic. You know, shrimp and grits come out of the South, it's robust, it was back when the economy was really struggling in 2008 in the US. And so everyone was eating hamburgers and eating butter and eating cheese and comfort food. Very, very comfortable, all right? And then as things moved on, I opened up Herringbone and I, I started doing like ceviches and lighter and brighter, more acid and citrus and stuff like that. So we're going to eat some ceviche. I understand that uh, raw fish is not very popular in this country, but we're going to give it a little whirl. And then we're going to come down here, and this is a dish from Urban Wood. I just did this on the Today Show the other day. Um, whole roasted chicken in eight minutes. All right? So this is just simple, great products, and very, very simple little um, South American chimichurri we're going to do with it. All right? 
So let's get started. I'm going to be bouncing around and we'll get to the questions here in a second. Let me just get some food flowing because they said that I get to serve some of you and I get to give away some cookbooks and I brought a couple chef jackets to give away too. And I'll leave Jason here if you want me to, all right? <laughs> all right, so again, back in 2008, uh, everyone was eating a lot, of, a lot of bacon, a lot of butter, a lot of bourbon, pork, right? And so what we're going to do right here is our shrimp and grits. I went all over the south. I went down to Louisiana and Kentucky, and I ate grits, all right? Knife work. You'll watch my knife work also. I always use everything at a 90-degree uh, angle, right? I don't cut like this. I don't cut like this. I cut here. The mean Frenchmen, they always uh, beat me up and made me do that. And it's, uh, you can see on both sides of your hands right there, all right? Uh, turn that up a little bit. So we want to render this bacon up to make it nice and crunchy. It's going to add the salty content to us. And of course, bacon is good with everything, right? We love bacon. All right, a little bit of bacon right there. We're going to let that render down. Jason's already uh, prepared. Uh, we don't have grits. We have polenta. So he's already prepared our polenta just because it takes a little while to cook. Uh, it's just ground cornmeal, right? And then back in the day, we were having so much fun. We we're like, let's add some butter, all right? We're going to add a little bit of cheese, maybe some more cheese, all right? Yes, yes, all right? Comfort food. There's, there's four seersuckers right now. Absolutely incredible. Seersucker is that fabric that you wear during the summertime, which it's always summertime here. Uh, very, very light, and you're always feeling good in your seersucker suit. You're dressed up, but you're not that fancy, and that's what the seersucker cuisine is all about. Uh, seersucker in the gas lamp in San Diego last night did 500 covers. Uh, so 500 people ate there last night. And so it just goes and goes and goes. And all of my restaurants are based around very, very large bars and a lot of, you know, social drinking, big community tables. People are sharing their plates, sharing their food. And that's the way I like to eat also. Rather than just ordering like one dish for yourself, it's put it all out there and eat all family style. Because I tell everyone, food is cool, food is great. But food brings people together, and it's the stories that you share and the conversation you have when you're eating that is so meaningful, and that's what I want people to experience. Down over here on this side, we're going to do a little bit of ceviche. Uh, I'm going to cut up a little bit of cucumber really quick, and I, again, I want to show you the, the knife work right here. So we take a little cucumber, and like everything in life, you just have to practice, and you'll get better at it, all right? So we're going to go right there. And then, I'm going to come right all the way to you so I can see what you're doing and tell them what it is, but I'm sure they can that see That little right angle I told you right there, little cucumber is going to add a little crunch. Now, this is not raw fish, so don't be worried here. What we've done is we've made a ceviche, very popular in like Central America, South America, ceviche. We come down here, we've got some nice cucumbers. So what we've done here is we've got a nice little snapper. Um, if you had it, you ate the fresh, fresh of the fish, the better. So if you go get the fish right from the docks, get it from the fisherman, you take your snapper, you cut the skins off, you cut the bones off. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook this without heat. All right, you have a lot of great citrus here. We're going to just uh, chop it up into small little pieces. The smaller the better because then it cooks really fast. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook this in citrus juice. We've done lime here. And Jason did this for us earlier today. So we have all of this. And you'll see that it's opaque. It's that white, right? That means it's cooked all the way through. And it's just the lime juice that's done it for us, all right? So we're going to squeeze that out. Put it in here. Clean our cutting board right here. And we're going to add the cucumbers to it. You can add whatever you want. Cooking, the best thing about cooking is it's not baking. It's not exact. You put some of this, you put some of that in there, all right? We're going to add a little bit of tomato. You can add whatever you want. I saw that you had a nice mango in your market over there. One more cutting board. Watch this. This is how I clean a cutting board really quick. There you go. Flip it over. All right. And so what Jason and I learned last night is that you love spicy food here, all right? We had some, what did we have last night? 
hot pepper soup, all right? I love hot, spicy food, so I am looking forward to our eating trip here. Uh, let me get a clean knife. We don't want to cross-contaminate. We don't want to use the same knife we just cut our fish with right here. So we're going to put these little uh, green chilies we got in here. I made Jason taste them for me so I know they're not too hot. I just was walking out there and I saw the cutest little goat ever, right? And then I saw the biggest snail of my life. And then I took a bite of the big snail. And so I'm, I'm acclimated now. I'm ready to roll. I'm invincible. All right. Right there, we got the chilies in there. We have some ginger right here. So again, what's fun about you know cooking in the U.S. is it's, it's a melting pot. You know, I saw the salmon and croute, a very French dish here earlier today by Chef Stone. We're gonna cut up our ginger, which gives us a little bit of an Asian flair here. We're gonna add some cilantro that travels across many, many continent lines. I love some cilantro, nice local little cilantro here. And again, I'm not really too concerned with my knife cuts. I like big, robust flavors. You'll see the ginger's big. My herbs right there, just kind of roll them up in a little ball. I love that. A little nice olive oil here. Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. All right. Olive oil is good and healthy. I, I also saw that you have some local olive oil here. So it's really fun to go check out all those products and really support the local economy. And, you know, like I said, all these amazing vendors out here and the neat things that they're bringing to the market. I saw some stuff that I'll probably uh, put in my pocket and take back to the States because there's some brilliant ideas going on out there on the floor. We're going to stir this up. How many people are going to try the ceviche? How many people are interested in trying the ceviche? All right, brave, brave. You've got to trust me. I know what I'm doing, all right? So... Uh, I, there's a big event in Las Vegas, Nevada right now. It's called Uncork. It's Bon Appetit's Uncorked. Um, and Gordon Ramsay's there, and Bobby Flay, and Jada. And I understand that you, you like to watch the Food Network here, right? And it's this weekend. And I have two restaurants in Las Vegas. And they're like, Brian, we'll see you there. And I said, no, you will not, because I'm going to Africa. I'm going to see my friends in Nigeria, so have fun without me. All right, what I liked most about Chef Stone demo earlier today was everybody knows about Salt Bay, all right? This guy's like crazy, right? Everyone loves Salt Bay, all right? So we'll hit us some salt right there, do some pepper. I mean, he's, he's, everyone's crazy in the States about him too. Everyone's doing their little Salt Bay impression. We have some little plastic forks right here. Plastic forks. Oh, all right, so before I take it out, I gotta taste it. I gotta know what I'm dealing with here. Really good. More olive oil. More salt. More pepper. All right. And what culinary school do you go to? The Culinary Academy, I'd like to give a huge thank you to uh, my prince and to Gift up here. Thank you so much. I got that right, right? Yeah. They got all this done for us. All right, my friends. So we're going to take the little plates and send some of this out to our friends. I don't know how, much, uh, how many forks we have, but right here. And this is great with uh, some sort of like a little potato chip or whatever you like or with uh, a mango or serve it with avocado. Absolutely incredible. So try that right there. Pass that around to my friends. All right, this chicken, you still think I'm gonna get it done? Hmm. How long did I say it was gonna take to cook? Yeah, you're gonna time me on that too. Well, let's have some shrimp and grits first. All right, I'm not scared. All right, so here we have our polenta going right there. I'm going to give it a nice stir. I'm gonna add the bacon to it. Oh, yes. All right, now I'm not even gonna take that. Uh, bacon fat out of there because it's going to be really great to cook my shrimp in. Bacon fat is wonderful cooking agent. Did you say that you had this on for me, chef? Ooh, beautiful. All right, so we're going to cook some shrimp right here. And the most important thing when cooking any protein is the heat level at which you cook it at, all right? We want to have great caramelization on it. Every fruit, every vegetable, every protein, seafood, steak, pork, 
It has natural sugar in it, all right? And that's what we want to bring out. So the hotter our saute pan or the hotter your grill, the more caramelization, the black, crunchy, good stuff. That's the natural sugar. If you're cooking a beet or a carrot or a, a plantain, if you get the char marks on it, that's when it tastes really, really good, you know? I know you guys boil a lot of meat here and stuff. When you're done boiling it, char it on something and it brings out so much great flavor, all right? We're gonna get these saute pans super hot right here. We're gonna think about this chicken. We're just gonna keep walking by that chicken going, hmm, how long is that gonna take us to cook, all right? A little ceviche. Do you have forks with the ceviche? Good. All right. Knife here, shrimp here. We'll get a little garlic in our, uh, our shrimp and grits. This is going to be really easy. Everything I do is really easy and really fast and really fresh. So that's the most important thing there, all right? A little garlic right here. Peel it up. Anybody have any questions right now? We can go check, take a couple questions. Yes, I've got the mic right here. So if you have questions, I'll bring it right to you. Let's start at the middle here. All right, what's your name and then your question? Hi, Chef Brand. Hello. My name is Karima. Please, my question is, the recipes, can we find it online? And what's your blog? Because I hardly hear what you're saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> What did she say? Okay, no, didn't she didn't hear you wanted the, She wanted the recipe and... I said, can we get the recipes online, like oh, your blog? Because I hardly hear what you're saying. <laughs> I, will, um, I will ask the culinary crew if we can get those posted online. So this one's really easy. We're going to do this one with brown butter, all right? I'll take you through a little bit easier here, all right? Again, no shortage of butter. Brown butter is when we take it right to the limit, all right? We're gonna burn, there's uh, milk solids in the butter. We're gonna burn those out right there. Got a little bit of garlic we'll slice up here. Brian, we got more questions for you. Yes. Should we go ahead? Where is she? There she is. Hi, Chef Brian. My name is Nenna. I'd like to find out, can you use any other um, fish besides the red snapper for your ceviche? Um, yes, you can use any, any white fish. I, I saw a, a salmon demonstration. You can use any fish you want. You can do it with shrimp also. You can do it with octopus, calamari. It cooks everything. So any, any seafood is going to work out really well for you. You're going all the way to the end. Just a second, I'll be, I'll be with you for a minute. Where are you, where are you? I thought I saw some hands here. If I can't find it, I'll go right to this gentleman here. Hi, Chef Brian. Hello. My name is Manuel. I just want to find out, do you have a culinary school? And if you do, how does it run? Your own personal culinary school. I, I do not have a culinary school. Um, uh, a lot in the US, what we do is the, the, the young people who want to be chefs, they come in and they just, they just start working. Everything from peeling potatoes, to cleaning the fish, to just cleaning stuff up around the kitchen. Um, and then as they learn, they get to move around the stations and do everything that way. Oh yes, the ceviche is good. All right, the shrimp's gonna be really good too. So Brian, while you've been here, have you heard about the great debate about jello rice? Pardon? Have you heard about jello rice and the great debate about it? About what? Jello rice. No. They know about it. So who cooks the best jello rice? <laughs> It's a funny story I'll tell you later. Oh, gosh. Okay. Question, question time. Where are you? There he is. Um, Chef Malaki. Yes. If I want to temper with your recipe, what do you think about um, a little vinegar into it? Vinegar? Yes. I think vinegar makes everything better. Um, what we're gonna get into over here on the chicken is a lot of citrus and vinegar. And right now, um, I tasted it in some Thai food recently, and I was so impressed. Everything from just white vinegar, uh, red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, sherry vinegar. Vinegar adds flavor to everything. So use it a lot and use it generously, all right? Extra virgin olive oil and vinegar makes life better. All right, so we got our shrimp going here. Shrimp's pretty easy to tell when it's been cooked. It's red. It's, uh, it's as easy as it comes, all right? Move that one over there. 
All right, we can take the grits, my friends. Did you season these with salt and pepper? Again, we don't trust Chef Jason, so we're gonna taste it ourselves. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. All right, so we can take the grits, start putting them on plates, and then this is how we're gonna finish this one. Gonna be super easy. So, again, because I'm here and you like spices, we're gonna put some chili in here for you. We have what they call Cajun seasoning here. It has paprika and garlic and cumin and cayenne, but that's just not hot enough for my friends here. Oh, that's cute. All right. As you know, I'm sure that the chilies give you uh, the chilies give you more heat with the seeds. The seeds are actually the ones that contain the the spice right there. So we're gonna take that. We'll build our little sauce right here. We want to toast it up. And get some caramelization on those because, like I said, the garlic's gonna uh, have some flavor right there. A scotch mush butter. Everyone's always asked me, "Do you do you cook in all your restaurants all the time?" And I'm like, "That's a kid sport. It's so it's the, all the restaurants are very very busy, and I'm very thankful for that. But they get back there, and it's like an orchestrated chaos, right? Hot pans, knives, moving, cooking, turning, cooking, burn. Ooh, yummy." So we got some of that food coming into the crowd there. Let's try and see how generous we can be with that. Do, we want, do you want more uh, questions, Brian? Yes, please. What distinguishes you from other chefs? What makes you different? There's a lot of great chefs, and I, I, I don't want to be distinguished from them. I want to be grouped with them. So, yeah, yeah. All right, real quick here. So this is just a little salsa, we'll call this, a, we call it salsa verde, a green sauce, right? Again, I just take the parsley, I kind of put it in a little nest, I roll it up tight. The, the knife is at the right angle. Perfect, all right. So this is kind of a, a play on a South American chimichurri. Capers, do we have capers here? I love capers, capers are not popular. Uh, they're just pickled little, they're caper berries. So just anything, again, I'm just adding in that vinegar. This is kind of the pickled vinegar acid right here. Then we took lemons and we cut the segments out of them. We're gonna put the lemon in there. Very robust lemon flavor in here. A lot of extra virgin olive oil. Is anybody timing my chicken? I am. <laughs> all right, extra virgin olive oil. And this is all this dish gets, all right? And so if you don't have the capers, you don't need them. Citrus, it's all about citrus and um, citrus and herbs, citrus and herbs, and that's all I've got in here. You can use whatever herbs you want. I like to use the soft herbs, be it cilantro or basil, right? A little bit of salt bay in there, a little bit of pepper. Oops, whoops. How do you like my apron? It's named after my son, Huntington, Huntington Co. So I designed my own aprons and I'm gonna start selling them someday as soon as I get organized. All right, I have that and this. Oh, how am I doing the chicken? Uh, you've got like four minutes. I'm almost, it's done. All right. <laughs> got a question here. Yes. Chef uh, Brian, good afternoon. My hello. name is Faith. Um, you said something about having 18 restaurants earlier and you closed down three. Now, I am a young um, restaurant owner. Yes. I started, I opened mine recently. And um, along the line, I discovered there are times you feel discouraged to want to move on. Yes. What kept you going as a chef? Um, it, it, it is Sorry. very discouraging. And like I said, I, I've closed some restaurants and there's nothing more depressing than like, oh, it's Monday night, Tuesday night. There's not very many people here. You gotta pay the payroll, you gotta buy the food, you gotta pay the rent, you gotta take care of all these things. And it does get very depressing. Very, um, very, I must <laughs> It does say. get very, very depressing. The only thing I can say is go back to what, like I said, Tom Colicchio said, go and talk to every single table that comes into the restaurant. Make sure they're having a great time. You know, commit, commit, commit. Because if you take care of this one guest right here, he will tell, or she will tell 10 of their friends, and then they'll tell their friends. They'll tell your friends. You have to talk to every single table. Oh, this is gonna be good. And so, have you ever had chicken where the, the, the thigh meat is so good, that dark meat, and the breast meat's just not very good? And 
by tenderizing it, pounding it down, it's all going to taste really moist and really smooth because I'm cooking it so fast and I'm cooking it all the way. I, I didn't even turn on my oven. I'm cooking it all the way on the one side so that skin is gonna be so super crispy. Okay. Hello, Chef. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chef Brian. Yes. My name is Joy. I tested the ceviche and it was wow. Yes. I love it. <laughs> but you mentioned what the kind of food it goes with. I didn't get that part. So if you took some plantain chips, if you, if you took some, I, I saw a lot of plantains in the market here. Um, we have potato chips a lot in, in our country. Potato chips, plantain chips, even uh, uh, some sort of a soft bread, anything, just kind of dip it up and get a lot of that, uh, the nice flavor, all that citrus and the, the lime juice, because uh, you want to absorb that. Okay, thank you. That's the, uh, what other carbohydrate, like your rice dish, can you go with it? Um, you, you could put that right on top of a rice dish. Okay. Oh yeah, that'd be amazing. Put it right on there, the rice would soak it all up. It'd be like a nice salsa on a rice. What happened to the lights? Uh, it'll come back on. Okay, so, uh, hey, I haven't gotten to taste anything, Brian. And you've been ditching out to everybody else. We've got a question here. Yes. All right, so just like real hello, quick. Hello, Brian. My name is Francis. Look at that. Actually, I'm a chef. I'm a passionate chef. Can you see this? I, I do watch you on Chopped. You what? I watch you on Chopped. So I you actually registered under you. See that so. chicken? Look at that. Oh. <laughs> so I love how you cook. I have three questions for you. Yes. One, you made ceviche. Ceviche, um, you added a leaf in it. But I don't actually know the name of the leaf. But can I use parsley for it, please? Can, can I use parsley? Parsley? Can I add oh, parsley yes. to it? Parsley is universal. You can use parsley with anything. It's, uh, okay. it's like salt. It just it goes with everything. It's not too commanding. You can use salt. I mean, you can use, um, you can use parsley. You can use basil, cilantro. Mm -hmm. Put spinach in there if you want to. Like I said, that's the best thing about cooking. There's no right and wrong. Taste it. Does it taste mm -hmm. good? And you know what? If you do something no one's ever done before, you're original. And you're... You're amazing now. You're like, oh, I've never had this before. This is incredible. So break the rules. Have some fun. Okay, my second question is, uh, I, I normally know that most people in the advanced countries, in the Western world, yeah. they like eating bacon. And bacon uh, um, contains nitrite. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a processed meat. Once again, so, I'm telling uh, you, you guys are just thinking too. It's a processed too. meat. So uh, <laughs> what are other options? You can, one, you, you can, can use, you use chicken? something to make your shrimp I wouldn't sandwich. use chicken because chicken's lean and you want to actually add more flavor to chicken um, you know you could take uh, if you go butcher a fresh pig you can just take the, the physical fat and render that off no nitrates fresh killed uh, pork beef fat you know when you when you're butchering the steak and you have all that you can render that off and make your make your uh, shrimp taste like that so okay one more thing please one more thing, please. Just a second. Um, I got to make sure that I'm not going to get yeah. penalized for my eight minutes, all right? My yeah. chicken's done. Oh, uh, please, can I get your cookbook, please? I'm a passionate chef. I train students. Can I get your cookbook, please? I train lots of students. I've got to get lots of students, please. Uh, Thank you so much. I love you, Brian. <laughs> Brian, he wouldn't give me back the mic. I had to wrestle it from him. He was good. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So right here is this beautiful chicken. Look at that crunchy skin. And then you can just cut all through it. We're gonna cut it up a little bit so you guys can have some over there. I still have some shrimp here. I think they're gonna hand out to you in a little bit also. Are we out of plates? What's going on, chef? Oh. Oh. That is looking good now, isn't it? All right, and then I have my salsa verde right here. I put some chili flakes in there because I know, what you, I know how much you love your heat. And we just put that right on top. And we need the rest of this also for the other tasting. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. All right, here for my best friends out here. Eight minute chicken, shrimp and grits, ceviche. All right, beautiful. Yeah. The best thing about being a chef or, or cooking also is that plagiarism is a form of flattery. So that pepper soup we had last night, 
I'm pretty sure it'll be on a menu really soon. <laughs> and so I'm going to go eat. We're going to go eat at a bunch of restaurants. And I look forward to taking some of your amazing cuisine back to the US. So are we good? That's going to be the last question. OK. So that's all we have time for today. I thank you all very, very much. Thank you so much for coming out. I look forward to seeing you. We'll be out and about. We'll be here today and tomorrow walking about. So say hello. Thank you all very, very much. I look forward to seeing you again in your country or in my country. Thank you.